Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. It's so good to be here today. I sure do hope that you are well. My name is Brian Mashigadi. I'm born again and Jesus is Lord over my life. It is the privilege and great honor of my life to serve God here at DCIKZ and Bishop Dr. Jimmy and Pastor Alice Kimani who are in the house on today. Let's celebrate Jesus for them. Yes, 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 yes. We are glad to have them back. Karibuni sana. Nyumbani. All right. Today we want us to go through um, one more uh, portion about the believer. And we just want to look at my working title is The Practicing Believer. The Practicing Believer. The Practicing Believer. That practicing is with a S because it is the verb. It is not the noun. It is the doing word. The noun has the C. The verb has the S. So practicing. Okay, you need British English, which we also call international English. You in Guinea see the American English, sir. So American only oko hapa. Mam now to wanna kutoka kule. we are it's we we just decided to use the British English on today, all right? <laughs> I want to say thank you to all of you for coming and for all of you that are joining us on Facebook and on YouTube. We bless the Lord for you. Uh, from different locations. It is so glad to have you on here today. Are you ready for God's word? All right, we go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. We're going to be reading verse 14 to 17. I'm reading in the New King James and it says, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one, we are the aroma of death leading to death. And to the other, the aroma of life leading to life. And who is sufficient in these things? For we are not, as so many, peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of of God in Christ. And that is the word of the Lord. Now Paul is writing this letter um, to the church at Corinth. He's speaking to them. This is that second, uh, what we call the second letter. So it's in 2 Corinthians. And there are many things that are happening right about this time. But just to place, it, uh, place us in where we are, Paul is introducing himself when he starts uh, in, that, um, in the first chapter, uh, introducing himself, first chapter of 2 uh, Corinthians. He introduces himself just like in many others of his letters and says, I, Paul, an apostle. Okay? And you see that carried um, through. That theme is carried through in a lot or many of his letters. The reason why it is of significance here when he's saying this is because... Um, by the time he's writing this letter to the church at Corinth, things are not very good. Actually, the last visit that he had had to the church at Corinth, the last, time, the last visit that he had to them, you know, he was their pastor. By the time he's visiting them at that time, he had gone on a mission of going to correct things. He was telling them, this is wrong, and that is wrong, and this one is wrong, and you need to deal with this one. And things were, things were heated, okay? So by the time he's, uh, he has left now, when he's writing this letter to them again, things are still not very good. Actually, people are saying some things to him. Um, it was at a time when the, the church at Corinth, or the Christians at Corinth, held Paul in such low regard. Nikamu alikuwa ameanza kumbeba hivi dogo dogo. Walikuwa ameanza kumuangalia kama, you know, he's not a very... This guy is not a very credible person to follow. That's why it is important that Paul introduces himself the way he introduces himself. He reminds them that he's an apostle, all right? So they had accused him of being unreliable and untrustworthy. Why had he done this? Because, why were they doing this? Because by this time, Paul had told them he's going to come and visit them by way of the letters, okay? He had told them that he's going to come and visit them, and then he did not come. To some of us, we might think that that was a petty, a, a petty reason. Until now, the church was angry. Actually, they are angry because their pastor has not come to them. But I want you to think for a second. Um, the bishop traveled, and he went away. And he said he's going to come back. And it's a week, and then it's a month, and then it's almost a year. See, so you start to think, 
Kwani tulimkosea? You want to start going to look for him. Now, if you, you feel that way, I want you to understand that the church at Corinth was also going through the same thing. Okay, but it is also important for you to understand that um, there was a reason for Paul not to come through, and that's what we're going to be looking at in just a minute. So, because the people, the, 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 the Christians at Corinth did not understand the reason why Paul was saying at that time, the reason why he said he will come and then he did not come, they, they thought he's a man who is very... You know, his word cannot be trusted. His yes is yes sometimes, and it can be no, and he's full of... The Bible actually describes it in the previous um, chapter as him being a man of yeses and noes, not being a man of whose yes is yes and whose no is no. And so he changes his plans. Um, he is actually on, their, on, their, on his way to see them, but changes his plans. Goes away because his brother or his minister, his friend, the minister Titus, is not with him. I'm just trying to give us an overview of where we are by the time we have landed, where we have just read in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. So he is not able to be with them. So Paul starts to write. When he writes a letter, instead of visiting them now, he writes a letter to them. And he does this for many, um, for many reasons. Some of the, uh, of the people around the time, some of the members of the church around that time, thought that he did not come because of his own self selfish reasons. They wanted to think simply, they were content with thinking, he is not a man of integrity. Kama alisema atakuja na hajakuja simtu mzuri. I wanted to think about your own example, for instance. Let me give you my own personal experience. When I was growing up, several times my mom would tell us, um, Nakuja, ni tatoka kazini mapema, ni wachukue, ndiyo tuende ushago. And as kids, that would be an exciting thing. So you get the house technician to get you ready, you push her and she gets you ready, and you wait. And you wait. Na sikuna ile usingizi mtoto analalaka mchana. Unangangana na yo usingizi. Ju unaona uneza lala, akuje, Akuache. So unapigana nayo. Unalala, una... your mom does not come. She comes in the evening just like kawaida. And you end up not traveling. Now, alikuwa mepanga mtaenda ni kweli. Lakini alikuwa mekwa hidi, nikikuja, nitakuja mapema tuende. But because now that you're an adult, you know that things change. Sindio? That sometimes even you, now you're guilty. You're the parent who is guilty of telling your children, I will come to Tayenda, <laughs> then you don't come. And your, your children are mad. You're just like, oh, I wasn't able to come today. But... The children are thinking, this is not a trustworthy person. Ukisema unakuja si ukuja. Ungekuja uniambie mambo ilibadilika alafu urudi kwa ofisi. But you, you and I both know, especially those of you that are parents, that kwamba wewe ndiyo sheria kwa? Kwako. So mambo ilibadilika kwa sababu kule unafanya kazi siyo wewe boss labda. Kwa hivyo boss alikupatia kazi ukienda kutoka. Sasa utatoka kazi ndiyo, utaribu kazi ndiyo kafresha mtoto. Si utaenda, you'll know how to sort it. It's around the same thing. So the child will be left thinking whatever they want to be thinking. But you, you have your own reasons. You know that you did it for good. It was not for your own selfish reasons. It was for a greater good. That's what Paul is trying to explain to them. Now, Paul wisely understood that um, considering all the things, the last time he left them, the way things were so heated, he had actually written to them, um, writing to them here. He's explaining to them, I think in, in um, chapter 1, he's saying to them, I don't want to come um, with things being the way they were. I don't want to come to you in this sorrowful state because I want you guys to continue working on the things I talked about last time. I don't want to come and then we continue to, to, to push and shove each other. Like a caring father or like a caring uh, pastor, he's saying, I want you to think about the things I, thought, uh, I, I told you about. Think about them carefully. Implement them. Ask the Lord to lead you in these things. And so he continues on and on to explain his case. Um... He's allowing them space, so to speak, to, or he's allowing them room to get things right with him, but most importantly with God. Because Paul had not sent himself. Remember we started by saying many times he introduces himself, an apostle of Christ, all right? He's saying, I have not come by my own mission. Whatever I'm telling you, it is because the Lord has actually commissioned you to come and, to tell, to come and tell you these things. It is much like when the pastor stands here and is speaking to us and is telling us one, two, three things are not right. We should not do such things. We should stay away from such things. You cannot go home and now say, By the time somebody is standing here with the word of life and they are reading it from scripture, the, in, the, the, the general thought is that the Lord has sent them to come and say these things. And many times the bishop has told us, if you, re if you receive Moshigadi just as Moshigadi, 
just putting my name there for example, if you receive Moshigadi as just Moshigadi, you'll receive Moshigadi's reward. And there is not much there, I can promise you. But if you receive Moshigadi as a servant of God, you will receive the servant, the, the, the reward of the servant, or the prophet, or whoever it is that the Lord has sent to minister. That goes down even to our cell groups. So that you're not thinking that, ah, uyu, uyu, tunamuonanga hapa tu kwa plot. You know, if you're living in a home cell, if you're, if you're living in a flat, uh, home cells are usually by geographical area, except right now where we're doing them on Zoom because of COVID. In geographical area. Kwa hivyo, unajua labda hata uyo nini wako, selida wako, ndio. Unajua ni binadamu tu kama yewe? Ama? Eh, hey, ni pastor tu, ametumetumwa amongst, amongst each other. We are human beings that have been sent among human beings. You, you are a believer that has been sent among other believers in your marketplace, in the office, in your family, wherever it is that you are, God has placed you there by design. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So you being in those places does not negate the fact that you're human. Actually, one of my favorite things is that when the Lord saved you, the day that you gave your life to him, you did not just get saved and become raptured into heaven. You are not raptured into heaven the day you said, yes, Jesus Christ, I do. No. He left you in the earth. There is a reason for that. Because he wants the earth to be filled with ordinary human beings that are not so ordinary. Why? Because they are earthen vessels carrying this precious treasure on the inside of them. The man Jesus Christ. That now people are able to look at you and say, Huyu mtu alikuwaga vile na sasa ako hivi, na bado mungu anaendelea kukutendea kazi ndani yako. Your family is able to say there is a difference. Uyu kijana tangu ile siku alisema ameokoka, hata akikuja family gathering zina kuanga tofauti. Hakuji akiwa tu vile alikuwa. Kuna vitu zenye akubali tufanye, kuna vitu zenye akubali tuseme. Maybe the only change is for you to stand there and say hatutakula huko kama hatujaomba. Ala. Maybe just those small, small things the Lord allows us to continue carrying out our salvation in this setting so that other people looking at you, may be able to have evidence of the fact that God can save. I want you for a second to ask yourself what the world would look like if we did not have the scriptures to read and know what God is able to do. I want you to also think of yourself, what the world would look like if we do not have other believers that whose lives you can look at and know what God is able to do. What sorry state of life we would be living in. Because it is by looking at another believer or hearing the testimony of another saint that you get to learn, Aya, kumbe God can save from this too. Maybe not for yourself, but you can believe for your brother or for your sister. When you see somebody has been blessed in one way or the other, you're able to know God is able to do even this. One of my favorite stories in scripture is the story of the birth of Jesus Christ. When the angel appears to Mary, he says to Mary, when Mary asks the question, how shall it be? And the angel continues now to outline and says, the power of the Holy One will overshadow you. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And one, two, three things are going to happen. The angel also finds it necessary to include and say, and look, your relative Elizabeth also, who was called barren, now is with child. Why does God include that small bit of detail? Because the angel, Mary is asking, how shall it be? Together with how it shall be, the angel is, is replying, or God is replying and saying to, her, uh, saying to Mary, that your relative also is heavy with child. She's actually ahead of you, a few months ahead of you. Her who was called barren is now being with child. Why is that necessary, I want you to ask yourself? It must be because God places himself strategically in the hearts and homes of different human beings to encourage those of us along the journey. That when you look around, Mary, the Bible said, and in those days, Mary hastened and went into the home of Elizabeth. Why? Because this was such a strange thing, it had not been read about anywhere before. Actually, a virgin girl is now pregnant with not just any ordinary child, with the savior of the world. That was a crazy thing. But it was necessary for Mary to understand that there was one who was in the business of doing this thing that was not a human being. And number two, that he was not new to what he's doing. He has done it before. He can do it even with her. So Mary hastened and went into the hill country, went and found her relative. And of her truth, the Lord used this now pregnant, once barren woman, now pregnant, heavily pregnant, old, pregnant, once barren woman, used this one to confirm that truly what you're carrying is, or what you're carrying is of God. Because the Bible says, the moment I heard you, I heard your voice, the babe within me leaped in my womb. 
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. That was just encouragement. That is the reason why the Lord does not save you and rapture you into heaven. That is why for those of you who might be saying, God, that afadhali kukufa ni kuje binguni, apana, hau taenda sasa. Your assignment is not done here. So because now we can agree that you're not going anywhere, not right now, you better get to work. You have an assignment. The Lord has called you and I to do something. He has set you in your family for a reason. You are not just there by fluke. God has set you as a believer in this day and age. Might you forget about the story of Queen Esther that recently we were just spoke to about here. Might you forget that the Bible actually says that Mordecai went and said to her, if you sit around just thinking you are queen, that you're just pretty and that you will be spared, I want you to understand salvation for the Jews will come from somewhere else. But do not be mistaken, you also shall perish. Because you never know, maybe for such a time as this, you have come into the kingdom. You have an assignment. Tell your neighbor you have an assignment. The Lord has called you for something. The Lord has called you and planted you where you are. I believe with all my heart there is no such thing as coincidence for a believer. No such thing. No such thing. Even with the small details that our small finite minds cannot grasp, the fact that you get into a 33-seater matatu, um, maybe pre-COVID, you get into it, and that matatu has those exact people at that exact time. My job is not to understand why those exact people are there. My job is just to know that even here, it is not by fluke. Bona sifiwe. That when I am traveling in a big vessel, a big aeroplane that has like a hundred and sixty watt people, even when I am inside there, I am not there by fluke. In fact, I might not meet or speak to any of those people, but the Lord has assigned for every one of us that each one of us will be around each other's spaces for a reason. That our small human minds cannot grasp, but God has a reason in you. So you, that, that knowledge causes you to walk different, to act different, to think different. Because you are on assignment. The Lord has called you for a purpose. You must be, as we said in the beginning, a practicing believer. So the word practice, therefore, what does it mean? It means to carry out or perform a particular activity, method, or custom habitually or regularly to carry out or perform a particular practice habitually or regularly. Therefore, a practice believer or, and somebody who believes, a believer is somebody who trusts in, and in our case it is trusts in God, trusts in Jesus Christ as the one son of God that has been given for the remission of our sins. So the practicing believer is somebody who believes or is somebody who continues to carry out or perform habitually the practice of trust in God. And trust in God means that you live according to the way he wants. You stay soaked or sipped in him. I like the idea of sipping something. Sipping something in something or being sipped in something is the idea of a tea bag when you put it in water. You're sipping it in there so that it can release whatever it has. So you are sipped or steeped. That actually would be the word. You're steeped in Jesus. Bonaisuasifiwe. Are we together? So Paul is speaking to these people, not to forget where we are. Paul is speaking to them and he's, telling, he's hoping that this letter would get all the difficult work out of the way because he has come from just doing a lot of disciplinary work in his last mission. And there was a lot of people who were at loggerheads. There was a lot of push and shove. And so instead of visiting them, he thinks a letter would be a better way to address these people. And so he writes this letter to them to, 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 to instruct them or to explain to them why he was not able to come to them. All right? So that he expects that by the time he comes to visit them the next time personally, it will be a better visit. It will be more, it will be more pleasant than the last time because they will have taken this opportunity of his absence to get things in order. Are we together up to there? Are we together? All right. Therefore, we come into now where we read. It says, now thanks be unto God who always leads us in triumph. If you continue to read that portion of scripture, this portion of scripture, this one all the way into uh, chapter 7 verse 4, it looks like he has digressed. He's explaining the situation, but by the time he's getting here, it looks like he's digressing from his point, but he's not just digressing. It is important that they understand that more than anything, that he is following Jesus Christ, and they are called to follow Jesus Christ. If anything, they're going to follow him, they should follow him as he follows Christ, such that if he were to veer off the way, they will still keep on following Jesus Christ. At the end of the day, your allegiance, your responsibility, the final words you will give, the final account 
account you and I have is to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Bonas if you That's the main assignment, to keep our eyes Godward. Hallelujah. We have just said we are believers, we are on assignment always. Our assignment is to keep our eyes on God. Hallelujah. So that when the tides come and the seasons change, our eyes are still focused on him. Therefore, understanding that, our, that the plan for every believer is to follow Jesus Christ, it is important for us, therefore, to know this, uh, these few things. That the practicing believer, number one, or the practicing believers are slaves. Okay? The practicing believers are slaves. You and I are slaves. And I know that could be triggering to a few of us. Anti-slavery movement and all these things. But it is necessary for you to understand that the fact that scripture continues to use this word. I was following a certain conversation just this past week um, online. You know, in this day and age, there are movements for everything and, you know, all these other things. And so there is a movement that is, is gearing itself up to sue. Is it to sue or to petition whoever it is? Um, was it the Roman Catholic Church? I don't remember who they were petitioning. But they were petitioning some higher power so that the word slavery can be removed from scripture. That's why I said it is triggering because you might hear this and you're like, kiskia jina slave, unaskia tu, kwa you just don't want to hear it. But it is important that we understand why we are being called slaves of Christ, why we are being, being called um, uh, slaves of righteousness. You see, the whole idea of a slave or a born servant was in those in those, in, those, um, in those days of slavery, uh, there are many kinds of um, brutality and all these other things that used to happen. But in those days, the slave had no say. Are we together? The slave was not allowed an opinion. In fact, in most times, their ears would be pierced, and they would be pierced to like the doorpost, um, to the, like some outpost. Pale tu inje, kwa mwenyewe, ndiyo asiende mahali. Ukitaka kuenda uana, lazimu watane na masikia yako. So the nani has to come and remove you from there. It was a, a difficult type of brutality. And so um, when, 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 when at the time when scripture is being written, in that time, that is a thing that used to happen around that time. It continues to be condemned as you go on and on and on. And especially spiritually, now the idea of slavery is, is I think I would call it dual. It is either you are a slave to righteousness or a slave to darkness. Such that even when the Lord saves you, you're not saved to be just living the way you want. The Bible says in the invitation that Jesus makes is take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is, and learn from me, because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That you have been called from slavery into slavery. Buonaiswasifiwe. That you have not just been called to live however you want, prancing on the prairies, living however you want. That if somebody comes and tells you what you're doing, like Pastor Kibera preached to us recently, what you are doing is not a good thing. When somebody tells you that, you're like, leave me alone, there's no condemnation. That is not a line to use to tell people, usiniambia chochote. That is a line to use with the enemy when he's telling you that there is no salvation for you. It is not a line to use to other believers that are correcting you. But as if you or to be so busy about the sentence of saying, only God can judge me. That is not, that is a thing to fall down when you're saying, imagine only God can judge you. When you're saying only God can judge you, it is necessary for you to remember that the person who can judge you, the righteous judge without blemish or sin, is also the witness at your crime. He was there when you were doing it. And so you're not going to hide some aspects of it from him. You can say, God, I didn't mean to do it, but God sees your heart. And then you started planning for it long time ago. You are planning over the years. Unasema tu, hey, wacha yule siku yenye. Uku nitakuwa faithful kwa hii nyumba nitafanya kazi, ndiyo wani trust. Siku moja ya masiku. Nitatoka hivi na hile kitu wanapendanga sana. Utoke hivi uwache bila birika ya maji. Hakunya. <laughs> or whatever it is that different value, different families value different things. Kuna kuingina ukiba kichungi umewa, umewamaliza kabisa. Kichungi ya chai. Watafanya nini? Na kuna kunyawa chai kila dakika. The thermos does not have a vacuum. <laughs> so maybe you're working around somebody's business. And your motive in your heart, it is a silent motive. It is very hidden. It is very subtle. Because the devil is subtle. 
inajifichanga tu kwa chini but you know in your heart of hearts that unakuanga huko you are faithful but you are not faithful faithful you are faithful with an agenda may the lord help us the believer the practicing believer must understand that we are slaves unto righteousness slaves of jesus christ the bible says now thanks be unto god who always leads us in triumph in christ he is the one that is doing the leading and we are the one that are doing the following i read a book um some couple of years back called his god and we are not and it was such an eye opener it was a brilliant book to just read and keep thinking that throughout the book there is the theme that is carried forward that you are not your own you are not you are you are not your own where seem to evoke kivyako you're not as independent as you think that it is the lord that is calling us into being it is the lord that causes us or pushes us to be now it has been said many times and i'd like to say it here again that god reserves three things to himself number one, he reserves the right to make something out of nothing remember the example of mary that i just gave god is saying to mary i am not new at doing this thing your relative elizabeth who used to be called barren is now heavy with child because together with god taking eyes that were shut and opening them he can come to a place where there are there is not a mouth without teeth and fill it with teeth have you thought about the wonder of a child growing teeth hiyo meno inatoka wapi ama kucha at you've never run ran out of nails hii miaka yote umeishi hivi uko mkubwa hivi kucha zijaisha acha na mambo ya nywele junyole wengine tuna interfere nayo God reserves the right to make something out of nothing. Number two, he reserves the right to know future events. Nobody else has that. These are the things that God has kept to himself. And number three, he reserves the right to have dominion over the consci- conscience of men or over men's consciences. Those are things that God has kept for him or kept to himself. But it is very sad that many times we 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 find ourselves thinking that uh, you can you can run your own life. I can do this alone. You feel like God is taking things a bit too slow. You want to take matters into your own hands. I know many of us have found ourselves in such a place especially when things are not going as expected the way you planned them to be. You are there you are just thinking why is God moving so slow? Isn't it very very common for many of us myself included to keep thinking by the time I am 40 I hoped to have done 1 2 3. Now row at behold I am 41 and none of those things has come to pass. Isn't it very common for you to sit and think why are you running late oh God? I want you to consider again the example of Mary and Elizabeth. Imagine if John the Baptist who was the son of Elizabeth and Zachariah. I want you to imagine if John the Baptist had been the honeymoon baby of Elizabeth and Zachariah. By the time Jesus is being born, John would be far too old to carry out the task of the forerunner that God had called him to be. The delay was scripted. He needed to come and become almost age mates with the man he was for running so that even the followers could be around the same age so that the going into the baptist into the jordan for the baptism would not be such a hard task i want you to imagine a man of many many years about 60 or there about trying to go down into the river to baptize a vibrant 30 year old young man no be small thing oh it's not easy the delay in the child of john of um zechariah and elizabeth was a scripted delay and that's just one example consider that and look at the other areas that you're trusting god for i want to assure you that god knows what he's doing he is in charge you and i are slaves to the one we are calling master that's why we call him master our lord and savior he leads we follow he says wait and we wait he says go and you go because even if you look at the story of the exodus for instance when the lord is speaking to moses and telling him go back return back this man needs this man called uh, called pharaoh has to become dumbfounded and menda sana rudi nyuma so he takes them back and he tells them actually i want you to go and camp and then pharaoh and his people will catch up with you there they will think to themselves that the children of israel are trapped in the wilderness we will go after them and then we will bring them back but the lord knows he's planning something because by the time he's taking them across the red sea the 
chariots of Pharaoh are right here. The Bible says 600 of his best war chariots. They are right here, just ready to go into the Red Sea together with them so that God can do what? Harvest glory. Won't you allow the Lord to harvest glory from your life in whatever situation? Allow the Lord to harvest glory. You are the slave. He is the master. If you are not content with that, then there is a problem right there. Oh, but to be content with that is to be a practicing believer. Because you're able to say, God, I believe you. See, the day you give your life to Jesus, that's what you said. He said, Lord, I give you my life. I trust you. I know you're working on something. You saved me. You died on the cross to save me. And so I want to live for you. Help me to trust you forever. That's the prayer you're making. And so now every day after that, it is a life of constant surrender and trusting and belief. Number two, the practicing believer is centered. Centered. S-C-N-E, okay, it is on your screen. Centered. The Bible says in verse 15, For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. We are to God the fragrance of Christ. God has made every believer or everyone that he has called to himself and caused them to be the fragrance of of Jesus Christ, such that you are scented. Imagine. See, that's a beautiful thing to think about. It actually puts it down and says, we are to God the fragrance of Christ. Imagine that is what God thinks of you. That when God sees you, when God thinks of you, and he hears of you, he's thinking about Jesus Christ. Because you're living a life that exemplifies trust and belief in the Savior. Hallelujah. The, 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 whole, the whole idea of being centered, or the whole thought of being centered, um, is borrowed from, from uh, those, those triumphal processions in the, in the Roman days. Yeah, the ancient Roman triumphs. How it used to go was something like this. In a triumph of the profession, uh, of the procession, um, of the victorious, the victorious general marched through the streets of Rome to the capital. In that procession, first came the state officials and the senate. Then came the trumpeters. Then were carried the spoils taken from the conquered land. Then came the pictures of the conquered land and models of the conquered citadels and ships. There followed the white bull for sacrifice, which would be made. Then there walked the captive princes, leaders, and generals in chains, shortly to be flung into prison and in all probability almost immediately to be executed. Then came the lictors bearing their rods, followed by the musicians with their lyres and their music instruments. Then the priests swinging their censers with the sweet-smelling incense burning in them. After that, the general came himself. Finally, the army wearing all the decorations and shouting, Lo, triumphe, their cry of triumph. As the procession moved through the streets, all decorated and garlanded amid the cheering crowds, it made a tremendous day which might only happen once in a lifetime. That is the kind of image that Paul uses of a general coming from war who has come victorious and now there is a triumphant parade. Many years ago in this church we used to um, have a, a, a parade um, or a marching band just before the opening of the ICC, the International Conquerors Conference. These are the days before we used to call it international. It just used to be Conqueror's Conference, all right? And people used to march all around Zimmerman. I remember with the then Bomani band. I don't know whether they're still there. With the then Bomani band, and they would go out in, it was a colorful procession. They would go around Zimmerman blowing their trumpets and the drums and going all the way down and coming up. By the time they are coming back here, it was a public spectacle. Once every year, and people used to follow and come to this place. Now, I want you to imagine that was just a procession to go announcing the greatness of the Lord and just preparing people that God is about to do something fresh at DCIKZ this week. That's just, just a public announcement. I want you to imagine now it is a whole nation. We are all at war. And then the generals of army have gone out. They have won the war and now they've come back. And whoever it is that used to be our threat is no more a threat. Now they have come back in chains. I want you to imagine that kind of celebration. That kind of, 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 of craze that would be happening around this place if that were to be the case. 
if you think about it that way, then it's, you start to understand what Paul is saying. Sit moja. You start to understand that Paul is now, uh, um, he's, he's taking that example and says, thanks be unto God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. And he allows us to be the fragrance of Christ to him. It says to other people, we are not a very good um, aroma or scent. To the people who are perishing, we are the aroma of death. That's why the church is being fought a lot. Again, if you go back to social media in this day and age of the internet, you will find a lot of people saying, oh, the church, oh, the church is irrelevant. Oh, the church is just a Jew barbaric. Oh, the church is backwards. The church does not want to accept the forwardness of the world. The church has been left in the, 20, in the 19th century. Oh, the church. They will say all these kinds of things. But beloved, I want to charge you today as believers of Jesus Christ to remember who our general is. His name is Jesus. The church has come through millions and millions of fights and wars and enemies and persecutions. And imagine, come out victorious each time because our general has never lost a battle. I want to assure you today that you and I have been enlisted into that great army. That every day, even though we don't sing it anymore, we are able to go around singing that old Sunday school jam. I am a soldier in the army of the Lord. That we are able to say, like Bishop was reminding us the other day from the book of Revelation, if I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. You're able to count all costs and say, I'd rather have Jesus than anything else that the world can afford. That if it comes to the point of death, I would like to think it is better to die with Jesus than to live without him. You are scented. Remember, we just came from saying that you've been called to every single place and you have been placed there on assignment. What is the assignment? To spread the aroma of Jesus Christ that is full of life. How do we spread this aroma of Jesus Christ that is full of life? We spread it through the simple, small things. The acts of kindness, the kind words, the being able to impart life onto somebody through positive language that we don't know defeat as Pastor Solomon was ministering to us in the first service. We do not know defeat. We are able to stand here and say, well, the fact might be that there is pain in my body, but the truth of the matter is that I know whom I have believed and there is healing that has been made available for me. It is not to be um, a fool, it is to actually speak words that are full of life, that are the truth that cannot be altered. But you're able to say like Paul, even though on the outside we may be wasting away, on the inside we are daily being renewed. Blessed be God. Because I know, again, he says in chapter 4 of this same, of this, um, same uh, book, he says that if you look, brethren, the current sufferings that are surrounding us are nothing, the light afflictions are nothing compared to the great glory that awaits us. We are looking forward to something, believer. I want to assure you that you and I have a promise, and that promise is going to be sure. It is going to come. So we are centered. We are on assignment. And finally, the practicing believer is sincere. Is sincere. The work that the Lord has called us to do, brethren, is a heavy task. Because you and I both know, especially if you go maybe to your family or to your office place, there are people who are looking at you and they just cannot understand that you are blind, but now you see. What do you mean now you see? You're still the same person. That you're standing there and telling them, now me, I'm a believer. Now the old is gone, the new has come. Unasema hivyo sasa tukurudisha ukue chia nini treasure wa chama? Hatu unakujua sana. Hala? Hati umeokoka. Tu unajua mambo zako. <laughs> but you and I both know that whether they believe it or not, the Lord has worked something in your heart. It's a genuine thing. Hallelujah. That now, imagine, just like that, the day you said, yes, Lord Jesus, I do, just those words come into my heart, until now you become a believer. That you are on your way to hell, and the day you said, I do, you are turned around, and now you're on your way to heaven. That's a crazy thing, but it's true. It's just like you people that got married, and you stood here, and you said, I do. Until you came into this place, single, just because you said, I do. Sounds crazy, but it's true. It works that way. It's the power of the words that were being spoke to, spoken to about 
about earlier. And that is the power of the connection or the words that you spoke when you came into the kingdom. He said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. In high school, they used to tell us, so long as you have never made a prayer and say to yourself, Lord Jesus, get out of my heart now. I am done. Bado kwa kwa isafina. Umeanguka, ni kama uki umebebo na basi, alafu basi yanze kusonga, ipite mabampi, gonge, unaanguka. Umeanguka inje ya basi, ya mo kwa ya basi. Uko hapi? Uko ndani ya basi? Mtu mwenye ameanguka ndani ya basi anaendelea na hiyo safari hapo chini. Unainuka unajikunguza mavumbi unaketi chini. Nasema sasa nitajishikilia. Kwa sababu uliambiwa jishikilie na Yesu. Jishikilie ukajiachilia kwa Yesu. Ikagonga mabampo wewe ukaanguka chini. Sasa ukianguka chini unafanya nini? Pastor Kibera likes to remind us that the saint is just a sinner who fell down and got up. To be sincere is to admit, as Bishop has told us many years, I am weak, but you are strong. To be sincere is to say, I don't know everything. Lord, hold my hand. To be sincere is to reach out to another believer and tell them, it looks like you have gotten the hang of this thing called salvation. Please help me. It's to reach out for accountability. To be sincere is to go to somebody else and tell them, brother, I fell in this one, two, three ways. Pray for me. The Bible says, confess your sins one to another and pray for one another. To be sincere. Because you know that you are a slave for Jesus Christ and you are centered for an assignment. And so to fall down is not the end of the journey. You arise and you come back and you say, Lord, I am weak, but you are strong. Lord, I took it from out of your hands and I went to do it my own way. But I give it back to you again today because I realize you have a better plan for me. Help my unbelief. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today. Lord, we're in this place and we lift up our hearts and our souls to you. We lift up our hands to you as well. And Lord, we stand in this place just to say that we are weak but you are strong but dear God we have faith but we also have some unbelief in our hearts and that's why we ask that Lord today you would help our unbelief we ask that dear God you would fill us with your Holy Spirit because without him we are not able to hold on we don't want to keep falling and rising up and falling and rising up we want to follow the instructions and the one who helps us to do it is the Holy Spirit our helper Oh God, won't you open the eyes of our understanding that first we will see you for who you are, the master, the king, the general triumphant in battle, and that we will also be able to see ourselves the way you see us, as slaves submitted to you that have been lifted to a place of reigning together with you, and that in response, Lord Jesus, we would give our lives to you, that you would walk with us, lead us and direct us. Feel us this week for the rest of our lives because without you we can't make it this is our prayer in jesus name amen come on put your hands together let's celebrate the name of jesus christ celebrate the name of jesus